What's going on guys, Sean Nalawani, seannell.com. And today I'm gonna to be outlining five main tips you should follow if you are losing strength while cutting. Uh, unless you're going through a prolonged cutting phase and you're dropping a large amount of overall body weight or you're cutting down temporarily to a very lean body fat percentage for a certain event, then you really shouldn't be losing much strength if your fat loss plan is properly structured. Uh, you should be able to at least maintain your strength throughout the beginning phases. And if you are gonna lose strength, it should only be happening as you get deeper into the cut. And even then it should be modest. Uh, you know, maybe losing a couple reps on smaller isolation lifts and maybe a very modest reduction in weight on those larger compound lifts. Uh, it does depend on how much total body weight you're losing and how lean you're trying to get, of course. Um, if you're a 230 pound power lifter who decides to lean down to 190 pounds, then obviously uh, you can expect to lose a more significant amount of strength uh, just from a decrease in your overall leverages. Uh, or let's say you're cutting down to 7% body fat for a contest, then obviously you're gonna be more depleted overall and that's gonna affect your strength more so. But for most average lifters doing a standard moderate cutting phase, strength loss should be minor if anything. Uh, some people can fully maintain their strength while cutting and others can even gain some strength, especially if they're still a relative beginner. So uh, if you are feeling considerably weaker and your weights are decreasing rapidly, it definitely should be a cause for concern and it's a pretty clear sign that there is something wrong with the structure of your program and that you're putting yourself at risk for excessive uh, muscle loss. So five aspects of your program to take a look at if this is the case for you. So the first is the most basic and the most obvious one, and that is that your daily calorie intake is simply too low. So if you drop your calories too low, then your ability to recover in between workouts is gonna be compromised, and you'll also have less resources available to fuel your actual training performance. Uh, more aggressive deficits are usually okay in the short term for some people uh, if it's only being done for a few weeks but eventually it will catch up to you. So if you're losing strength on a cut, then take a look at your daily calorie intake and take a look at how quickly you are losing body weight from week to week. Uh, for most people, uh, a standard 500 calorie deficit is gonna be a good balance between losing fat at a decent pace, but also maintaining muscle size and strength. And if you're losing any more than about one to two pounds per week on an ongoing basis, then you'll probably wanna up your calories a bit until you're falling somewhere within that range. Uh, those who are more overweight and who are carrying more fat can usually get away with losing weight a bit quicker, uh, whereas if you're already within uh, a healthy body fat range and you're just trying to cut down leaner while maintaining as much size and strength as possible, uh, closer to about one pound per week is gonna be more appropriate for you. The second thing to look at is your macronutrient breakdown. So you don't need to obsess over uh, every single gram of protein, carbs, and fats that you're eating every day, but if there is a glaring imbalance in there, uh, it definitely can have a negative effect on your strength levels. Uh, for example, if protein is too low, then you won't properly recover in between workouts. Uh, and if it's too high, then your carbohydrate intake is probably gonna end up too low, in which case your workout performance is gonna suffer. Uh, if fat is too high, then either protein or carbs could be too low. And if fat is too low, then your hormone levels are gonna fall out of balance and you're gonna feel a lot worse physically and mentally and that could impact your workouts as well. So again, uh, this doesn't need to be perfect, but during a focused cutting phase, your macronutrient breakdown does become a bit more important because you have fewer total calories to work with and there's a better chance that uh, one of the three will end up too low. So to make sure that you're getting enough protein for adequate recovery, uh, enough carbs to fuel your workouts, and enough fat to keep your brain function and your motivation in check, a good basic breakdown is to go with 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight daily. Uh, you don't need more protein than this, uh, even if you are cutting. Uh, get 25% of your total calories from fat, and then fill in the, uh, the remaining calories with carbs. And if you're not sure how to calculate this, then I'll put it in the uh, description box below for you to check out. Just try to land somewhere around those numbers and uh, your chance of losing strength while cutting uh, or losing muscle is gonna be much lower. 
Tip number three to maintain strength while cutting is don't go overboard on cardio. So I always recommend that people include some cardio during the week, uh, not just as a way of burning additional calories and uh, preventing your calorie intake from having to drop too low, uh, but also just for overall physical and mental health. But a lot of people do tend to get a bit excessive with it uh, during a fat loss phase. You don't need to be uh, running on the treadmill five or six days a week in order to lose fat. And if you do perform too much cardio, uh, you're gonna be interfering with your recovery from weight training. Remember that uh, since you're in a calorie deficit, your recovery ability is already lower than normal. Uh, and that's gonna make it much more likely that you will lose strength, especially if you're performing your cardio pre-workout, uh, which I don't recommend doing. So a bit of cardio is fine, but I wouldn't recommend exceeding three weekly sessions as a starting point. Uh, and try to do it separately from weight training if you can, uh, or at the very least do it post-workout, and only increase your cardio frequency from there uh, if it becomes necessary later on in your cut. Tip number four is to keep your basic weight training approach the same as it was when you were bulking. Uh, a lot of lifters fall into the trap of thinking that uh, you know heavier weight compound exercises for lower reps builds muscle, and uh, Lighter weight isolation exercises for higher reps burns fat and shapes the muscle, uh, which is totally false because you can't spot reduce fat from specific areas of your body. And the only thing you can actually do with weight training is to make a particular muscle as a whole bigger or smaller. Uh, muscle definition is just a product of your overall body fat percentage in combination with how much total muscle mass you're carrying, and it has nothing to do with which specific exercises you perform or how many reps you're doing per set. So if you do switch to a lightweight, high rep plan, all you're really doing is weakening the overall training stimulus, which is gonna cause you to lose strength and lose muscle mass much more quickly. And tip number five, uh, if the previous four points are taken care of, so uh, you're eating in only a moderate calorie deficit with a reasonably balanced macronutrient breakdown, uh, you're not performing too much cardio, and you're continuing to train in the gym with basic uh, moderate to heavy weight sets as the foundation of your workouts. If you're doing all of that and you're still losing strength quickly, you can try cutting back on your overall training volume. Uh, it's not always necessary to reduce your training volume during a cut, uh, because it does depend on how much you were doing in the first place as well as other factors. But if your strength is continuing to drop, try cutting your total workload by about 25% to start and then see if that helps. Remember that uh, your primary goal during a cut is to provide enough training stimulus to maintain your existing muscle. And so you don't need to be in the gym uh, six days a week with uh, you know high volume workouts in order to do that since your recovery resources are gonna be limited in a calorie deficit and performing too much work can actually start to work against you if you aren't careful. So those are the five main tips that I'd give uh, if you find that you are losing strength on a cut. And as long as those are taken care of, it should correct things for you. Uh, if you really want to fully optimize things though, I'll give you three more smaller quick tips here uh, that you can employ as well before I close out the video. Uh, the first is that if you are currently training in the morning, you can try moving your workouts into the later afternoon or the evening uh, if it does suit your schedule. And the reason for that is because strength levels do technically peak later on in the day, and that could help to give you a small extra boost. Uh, the second is to start incorporating a weekly refeed day into your plan. Uh, I'll link a post that I did on that in the description box, but this is basically where you just eat at your calorie maintenance level once a week with the increase coming from carbs. Uh, and then take that refeed day and position it the day before your most challenging workout of the week. Or you could even do this twice a week, uh, depending on how deep you are into your cut and how lean you're trying to get. Uh, and then lastly, if you currently don't use anything other than regular food as your pre-workout fuel, uh, you can try incorporating a basic pre-workout supplement stack into your program as well in order to up your performance a bit. Uh, caffeine being the most effective, uh, but I will link a video in the description box below that I did a while back uh, that outlines my recommended uh, homemade pre-workout stack. So I hope these tips were helpful. 
Uh, if you're not quite sure how to lay out a fully structured cutting plan in order to uh, maximize fat loss while fully minimizing muscle loss and strength loss, then you can download my Body Transformation Blueprint by clicking here uh, or by heading over to bodytransformationtruth.com. The link is in the description. Uh, that includes all of my recommended workouts, meal plans, and supplement guides for doing that along with uh, information for bulking phases as well. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found the video useful. Uh, my official blog is over at seannow.com and you can follow me here as well if you aren't already. The links for that are also in the description box. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next video.